Hey everybody, this is Dr. Maples. I hope your semester is going well. So let's get started on our cultural sociology lectures. Now in this lecture series, we're gonna do a couple of things. Today, we're gonna to spend some time defining some basic ideas, specifically what is culture, and also defining what we mean by a cultural sociologist. Now in subsequent lectures, we're gonna spend some time thinking about the forms that culture might take. We're gonna talk about material versus non-material culture, and we'll spend a lot of time breaking down non-material culture. It's a really big idea, and remember, anytime we encounter a big idea, we wanna to try to break it into smaller pieces so it makes sense, and we'll do just that with non-material culture. We'll also spend some time thinking about what happens when you as an individual experience a new culture for the first time and how that might make you feel. We'll also, at the very end of the lecture series, get to see our first sociological lens of the semester. Now we'll learn three of these this semester. This first one is something we call structural functionalism, and that'll help us understand why culture plays such an important role in our society on a daily basis. Well, let's get started. This is exciting. Now our first idea involves going back in time. We need to think about something we've already learned, and that's C. Wright Mill's sociological imagination. Now remember, with sociological imagination, Mills gave us two ideas, biography and history. Biography dealt with your individual choices, what you choose to do. With history, he was thinking about all the ideas, principles, experiences, and things happening around you in society on a daily basis. And he felt that these things happening around you in some small way might shape your biography. Now, one of the ideas that Mills has been thinking about this whole time with the sociological imagination and his idea of history is that culture is one of those things that shapes your experiences or biography. That's something that we're gonna hone in on time after time after time in this lecture series. So keep that in mind. As we go through this whole lecture, think about cultural experiences, cultural knowledge that you've learned from day one, and ask yourself, to what extent, if at all, have these shaped some of the decisions that you've made, some of the things that you think are normal or acceptable? In what ways has your culture shaped the ideas that you hold true? And we'll also experiment with that as we break down these ideas of material culture and non-material culture in a later lecture. But for now, we need to define culture because I don't want to get too deep into a culture lecture without defining the thing that we're going to talk about. Now, what do I mean by culture? If we have to keep it really simple, if you want to remember it in a sentence, something that will pop up on an exam, for example, we could say that culture is the entire way of life for a group of people. It's amazing because culture can cover almost anything. In fact, you're going to come to find out that when we define material and non-material culture later on, it covers almost anything that you could think of. Culture is literally the totality of our language, our knowledge, the material objects that are important to a culture, our behaviors, and it goes beyond that too. It tells us things like what a normal behavior would be, what a normal idea would be, what an acceptable thing would be, and it also does the opposite of what isn't acceptable. Our culture even includes ways that we tell people when they have crossed lines uh, to help pull them back into what's considered normal for our culture. Culture is a very big idea. In fact, for that reason, we'll spend a lot of time breaking it into smaller pieces. But understand that there's many cultures. First off, each of us have our own cultural experiences. I grew up, for example, uh, as a Southerner, as an American, um, and as an Appalachian. These are all different cultural ideas that are important to me in many different ways. But sometimes they conflict, right? For example, you could find reasons that maybe Appalachian ideas might conflict with American ideas. That's okay. In fact, we'll talk about what that looks like a lot later in the semester or in the lecture series. But for now, understand that even though there are multiple cultures, as Americans, we often feel that there's sort of a mainstream culture. There's sort of a central idea of more or less what looks normal. Now, that can be many cultures um, giving ideas to that that create this mainstream culture. In fact, some might even argue that we're seeing a global culture in which this mainstream culture is spreading across the planet so that now more than ever, people more or less see things the same way, more or less. Now, this is exciting too because cultures can share ideas when they run into each other, but they also have arguments. We'll spend some time thinking about that in a little later lecture series as well. For now, try to understand that culture is really big. 
and it represents everything that you learn from the moment you're born uh, right up through your early adulthood. Now, by the time you're in an early adult, you've more or less learned a lot of cultural values, but those values can change with time as well. You can imagine that sociologists are very interested in culture because it represents a really amazing way in which the individual's experiences are shaped by the things happening around you. They're shaped by the things that your culture might find acceptable or normal or the right or wrong thing to do. And moreover, they shape your experiences in that if you get out of line, there's many cultural ways we'll come to find out that people can be pulled back into the fold, so to speak. In fact, there's a whole realm of sociology dedicated to this idea of culture because it's so exciting. And we call it cultural sociology. They couldn't think of a very original name, I realize. But it's exciting because cultural sociology is interested in how you as an individual are shaped by all these things happening around you. Imagine for a moment someone coming from your cultural background, whatever that may be, your young experiences of growing up, Think about the things that you were told were normal or acceptable behaviors. Think about the careers that you were told um, were desirable. Or think about the things that you were told about college. Were you told that college was an important idea or it wasn't an important idea? Think about the things that you were told too about what you should do um, as an adult, like having a family, getting married, having children, getting a dog. Think about the things that you were told were kind of expected of you as you grew up too. Was it expected that you would take care of your parents? Was it expected that you would help your siblings? Were you expected to be a religious leader in your community or a political leader? Were you expected to serve to your community? These are all cultural ideas and cultural sociologists are interested in it because in some small way, these are all things that shape who you are and that's okay. It's part of who you are. It also gives you a chance, too, to look back on the things that you've been taught and reflect on to what degree you agree with those things. Did I say degree? To what degree you agree? Can we edit that out? Yep, good. Thanks, Kenneth. So cultural sociology covers a lot of territory in trying to understand how culture works. Now, for a cultural sociologist, they look at groups of individuals from a particular culture and they ask themselves, to what degree has that culture shaped um, members of that culture's outlook on life, uh, their life course or their birth to death experiences, it's life course, um, the options that they think are viable choices, um, the decisions that they might make, even the dreams that you have. Your culture shapes the things that you aspire to become. Moreover, culture tells us what is normal. So cultural sociologists are very excited to try and study the idea of what you, coming from a particular cultural background, think is normal because of what you've been taught from day one. Now, where did sociology or cultural sociology come from? Well, this actually comes from Europe originally. We saw a lot of cultural sociologists in Germany. Um, these were around the 1920s. So this is uh, right after uh, World War I would be uh, in, in swing. Um, this was a really exciting period of time because we were trying to understand the individual's experience in relation to history, much like we did in the early days of sociology with Auguste Comte. Remember, he was a child of the French Revolution. And so this was a very exciting time for cultural sociology. It ends up being reinvented in the 1960s in the United States. Why in the 1960s? it was an extraordinary time of social change. In fact, you won't be surprised to, uh, to hear that cultural sociology is again on the rise right now because this is a very exciting period of social change. So these are all very big periods of uh, things are changing, things are weird, people are nervous, and that's the realm of cultural sociology. If those things interest you, cultural sociology is a field for you. Now that's where I'm going to stop with today's lecture. Remember, cultural culture is the totality of a way of life for a group of people. It can describe a lot of things. In fact, in our next lecture, we're going to cover a lot of those ideas of what culture can cover. And also remember with cultural sociologists, they're interested in how culture shapes our experiences as an individual, bringing this right back to C. Wright Mills yet again. Now, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Make sure you complete your quizzes, and if you need anything, send me an email. We'll talk soon. See ya.